everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John and thank you so much for being here. Solid serious topic today. Let's do it. What's the most disturbing thing you've ever seen? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Many years ago, I worked at a hospital that was a major trauma center. I had the misfortune of being assigned to help in the ER one night. A baby was brought in, a small dog, Dachshund. It was the 70s, I don't remember for sure. Got in the crib of a newborn and chewed the baby's legs off. The baby died a few days later. It was effing horrific. I had nightmares for years afterwards. A few months later, I decided nursing wasn't for me. In person, I saw a dead body over a year ago. My landlord's sister was terminal and living with us. I came downstairs on my way to work and her room was at the bottom of the stairs. Her door was open and she was laying in bed olive-colored skin, and her whole face was sunken in. Found out later that she purposely overdosed because she couldn't take the pain anymore. The most effed up video I saw was some dude cutting off this woman's head in the middle of the street, somewhere in the Middle East. I watched a guy shoot his finger off with a 5.56 rifle. His finger basically exploded and flesh flew everywhere. He then looks to me and says in a deep southern accent, calm and for some reason, Oh, damn, I shot my effing finger off. The bullet went through the middle knuckle of his index finger as he held it up. The top part was dangling from a small piece of skin, and I could see his bone. He then swung his hand, and thick blood squirted out. We this quickly got him out of the woods so we could call 911, and they met them at the local fire station. The guy was honest, not as upset as you would expect, and even had some humor about it as one woman, his dad, had the same incident happen, and two, when asked if he wanted to keep what was left of his finger, he told the doctor, once again in his strong southern accent, hell no, I don't want my numb getting caught on shit. These incidents were more disturbing due to the emotions involved than anything physical. I'm a hospice nurse, and there are a few deaths that stand out in my memory. One. I was too dumbfounded to do anything when my patient's husband gently strangled her to death right in front of me. She had aspirated a day or two before and had a pronounced gurgle. He pulled her up into an incredibly awkward and twisted position until the gurgling couldn't be heard and held her tight like that for over a minute. Two, another patient's significant other wouldn't stop attempting, untrained and effective CPR, on his deceased girlfriend for over 30 minutes. I had to call in our chaplain to help me calm him down. The patient's children called the police on him for trespassing the moment that her body was out of the home, so it's difficult to know if his desperation was more fueled by love or fear. He kept insisting throughout the CPR attempt that they'd technically gotten married. They just didn't have the paperwork. 3. A patient fell down and happened to pass during because of it. His wife called lift assistance, but because the pulse was not in the fridge, EMS insisted on CPR for over 20 minutes, despite the wife crying and begging them to stop. I showed up with a digital copy of the pulse, and they said it wasn't good enough. They went another 10 minutes before the lead called it. That patient's face was absolutely caked in the blood that had been squirting out of its mouth with every compression. The bed and carpet were covered in blood. I got most of it cleaned up and made him as presentable as I could for his wife, but no matter how I tried, I couldn't get all the blood out of the beard. The first day I came across YouTube, I got a welcoming video of a man blowing his brains out. The clip was only a few seconds. It looked like it was happening on the side of a highway and was recorded on a low quality phone. I distinctly remember him shouting something in a foreign language, put the gun up to his head, pulled the trigger and dropped. He was dressed in an army uniform and looked distressed, like he was suffering from PTSD and couldn't take it anymore. To this day, I don't think it was from any movie, because there wasn't a description indicating where it was from. I don't remember what year this was, it had been on YouTube when YouTube was just taking off and didn't have guidelines on what you could and couldn't upload. After that, I didn't go on it for years, because I thought it was a gore site. I still think about that video to this day. On the topic of gore, while scourging the internet unsupervised when I was a kid, I was this close to watching the infamous 
three guys one hammer video, but as I was about to click the link, something inside me told me to stop and read what it was about first because the title alone didn't sit right with me. Glad I listened to my instincts. After I read the Wikipedia on it, I immediately noped the F off the internet. I shut down the computer and went to do something else to take my mind off what the F I just read. Even reading it scarred the F out of me. I'm almost 30 and refuse to watch it, read about it, or even think about it. I know it's just morbid curiosity and when we're young we do things, but I detest that that stuff ever made it into a public space. It's somebody's child or family or parent and we just ingest this content and move on. After working at a veterinary clinic for a decade, you see some things, but nothing was quite as damning as the dog that came in after a fight and being hit by a car. Apparently, somehow the dog managed to get away from the one that was the aggressor and ran out into the street. The person who brought it in wasn't the owner, but someone who had passed by as it laid slump in the road. The only way we knew it was a car that hit it was because the tail was split, hanging by tendon, and both back legs had been torn off, assuming by the vehicle that ran it over. Its neck had severe lacerations, and it was missing an ear. Further examination was done after it had been laid to rest. I have never heard a dog make a sound like this. Doc immediately gave it the pink juice. There was no point in even putting it under anesthesia because the dog had lost half its blood already and showed no signs of stopping. We just kind of stood around and watched as it slowly died. I've worked with dogs and various animals for 15 years and counting. I train dogs now. The first thing that comes to mind, I was in Sacramento, California for the 4th of July this year. Kid in high school blew his hand apart with an M80, pinky and ring finger hanging by the tendons. His thumb got blown off somewhere where some girl picked it up, freaked out, and threw it somewhere else in the parking lot. The thumb ended up in the snap map later that night. Anyways, some good Samaritans treated him, wrapped a belt around his wrist, and cops and paramedics came and shut the whole thing down. I guess now he's doing speeches at schools for firework safety and speaking to young athletes, which is awesome. I hope he's doing good. I can't imagine that happening to me at such a young age. He was on the school baseball team too. This is kind of gory. So, once I was at a gas station with my parents, I was like 10 or 11 at the time, and my mom and I were waiting for dad to finish. Out of nowhere, a homeless man in a wheelchair appears from behind our gas pump. This guy had his whole right leg open. You could see blood, muscles, I'm not even kidding what I'm saying, I could see his bones. This guy had mosquitoes and worst part of them all, he was eating himself. He was just eating the dried skin and the edges like it was some sort of special jerky. He didn't ask anything, he just stood there staring at us. And in an instant, I did direct eye contact with him while he chewed. Not gonna lie, that scene scared me a bit. I still remember it vividly, yet when I saw him, I wasn't that scared. I was more like, oh, WTF? Of the things I read, this might be one of the most disgusting things I've ever read, so thank you? I don't know, that's pretty gross, man. My 40 male, soon to be ex-42 female, lied to someone while I had full knowledge she was lying. There was no tell at all. I had to quietly sit there while I realized she either was an amazing liar or was always lying to me to the point I never saw her telling the truth. When she told me she was in love with the woman, 23 female, she saved from an abusive relationship and wanted a divorce, I was heartbroken. I'm finally realizing, while sometimes seeing them together, how I married her mask and my replacement face is the same mask with no clue. I want to tell the home record, but honestly, it would be best for me if they stay together for a few more months. Let me harden my heart against the saccharine sweetness she will likely aim at me when she's alone with no one to rely on. I'm not strong enough yet. I won't go into too much detail, but just a few weeks ago, I was lucid dreaming. I've been lucid dreaming since I was a kid, so I've never had trouble with it before. Well, in the dream, I was with this girl at school and we were talking about our drawings. I'd like to talk to the people in my dreams and she opens her backpack to show me her sketchbook, but it's empty. She gets mad and says that Chloe, I don't know who Chloe is, 
must have taken it. We get up and go find Chloe, who's laughing with her friends at the girl's sketchbook. The girl tells Chloe to give it back, and Chloe makes a horribly racist comment towards her. The girl slaps her, and then out of nowhere, Chloe and her friends R-word her. I've tried to move, but it's like I wasn't even there, like I was stuck. I desperately tried to wake up, but it wasn't working. I couldn't even look away from the scene or change what was happening. I only woke up when my dad called me. I even look away from the scene or I only woke up when my dad called me. I immediately vomited and called sick into work. I don't know what the F that was or why I couldn't wake up. It almost feels traumatizing, even though it didn't really happen. But why would my brain create something like that? While in college, I picked up a few side jobs to make some cash, babysitting, walking dogs, cleaning houses. One man was the doctor with a beautiful home and even more beautiful wife. They were out of town and hired me to clean the house from top to bottom. In the basement, I found a large envelope behind the couch and took a look inside and was sickened by the Polaroid pictures I saw. It was the doctor having sex with a G-damn dog. I took the pictures out of the envelope and put them in the top dresser drawer of his wife's dresser so she would find them. I never went back to that house to get paid. I did not want to be anywhere near that sick bastard. Mm. I was hanging out with my best friend, who I knew since I was two years old. I trusted him so much, but he still would show me horrifying shit. One day he went on this weird website that had 777 written on its name. There was a video of a depressed Russian man who was holding an all-black AK-74M standard rifle for the Russian army. He took the gun, pointed it at the bottom of his skull, and blew his brains out. This is horrifying, and my friend who was sitting beside me was laughing his ass off. Saw someone get their brains blown out over drugs. That was surreal. Won't type a long story, but dude was walking away from the argument with his back turned. Other guy raises the gun he already had out. One through the head from four feet away. Red mist. Dude took one extra step before just falling into a pile. Weird runner-up, even though it was not something I saw. The first time I really learned about Christopher Columbus, I threw up a lot. Hmm? I once watched a video of a dude who had nodded off, lying on a bed with a girl sitting up beside him. Her boyfriend comes in and repeatedly punches the absolute F out of this dude's stomach while he's basically unconscious. The guy's so far gone, he can't put his hands up in defense, so he just groans. I'm sure he had a few broken ribs, at least. I've seen killings and shit on live leak, best gore, etc., but that shit just made my stomach turn. Guy lying defenseless. I don't know. I could feel it. I saw a dude with a needle sticking out of his arm on a sunny day. He was older, or looked like he was in his 50s. For a moment, I stopped to make sure he was breathing. He was, so I continued on my way. I called my mom after because I couldn't believe it, and then I felt sad for him. People who do drugs are always chasing the best high. I wish whatever was causing them pain could be removed. No one deserves that kind of pain. God forbid Narcan saves lives. Junkies get mad when you try to ruin their high. Worked at a place that supported a child victims unit in my area. Tragic mistake left a remote session open for a fix at a conference room PC. Glance back. It was child predation numbers in my neighborhood. And dad, have five-year-old girl, closed session immediately when discovered open. Thought it was auto-closed. Told supervisor, left the building, chain smoked four cigarettes and left to hug my child at home. Humans are terrible to each other. Horrible motorcycle accident. Guy tried to move around a semi on fast-moving highway on wet, slick roads. Lost control and got thrown under the semi-cab, probably at 70 miles per hour. Instantly crushed into the asphalt. I mean, it was in the blink of an eye. The worst was, while providing my statement to highway patrol, I witnessed the firemen scraping the remains from the road with what I can only describe as a pizza oven peel utensil, then putting it in bags. Couldn't drive on the freeway for a solid three months after that. So one of my best friends shot himself in the head at his dinner table with a 38 revolver. We were friends since high school and were comfortable enough to where I could walk in unannounced and he would do the same. We grew up, but that didn't change. 
Life happened and we didn't see each other as frequently. We arranged to hang out, but shit happens and we had to do a rain check. Two days later, I just pop up. His car's there and door's unlocked and I found him at the table. I'll never forget that sight as long as I live. I called the cops and I just sat at the table with him and sobbed until they got there.